Okay, well, welcome to a brand new series of videos where hopefully we're going to take a fairly comprehensive look at 3D rendering. And we're going to be talking about graphics, we're going to be talking about ray tracing, OpenGL, rasterization, uh, and we're going to be using C++. But just a, um, a disclaimer here, if you are interested, as many people are, in just um, watching a five minute or 10 minute video where someone codes as fast as he can and speaks as fast as he can, and your only interest is copying and pasting his code and pressing a button and acting like an expert, that's not what this is about. This is about trying to understand the concepts behind graphics and images and objects and ray tracing and uh, rasterization and really get a firm foundation in it and also apply, you know, hardware concepts and understand what hardware we're going to be using. And ultimately, I'm hoping that we will get to the point where we'll be talking about the new uh, NVIDIA optics and RTX technology. And um, I've got some hardware here we can use uh, to show off some of the concepts. So, um, the basic topics that I've got outlined now uh, in order of what I, I'm hoping to cover are images. And we're going to use, unlike many um, purely uh, software-based uh, tutorial videos, we're going to actually look in depth at images and we're going to generate our own images using GIMP, which is a uh, public open source wonderful uh, image generation and manipulation program. And we're going to use GIMP and we're going to make our own images and it will help us to understand the basics of what's inside an image. How do you make an image? Uh, we're going to talk about maps that are associated with images, textures, uh, UV mapping that we're going to need in 3D rendering. So we're going to use um, this GIMP quite a bit to make our own stuff rather than just you know copying what we see on the internet. Uh, because honestly, if we have control over it, it helps us to um, to tweak things um, and we know what we're tweaking and we can see how it affects our renderer. Uh, and then we're going to step into objects and we're going to use an absolutely wonderful, highly, highly recommended 3D modeling and rendering and compositing software called Blender. Again, it's free. Uh, it's um, open source. You can download it. It's very easy to use, especially in recent years. Um, they're doing a lot of development on it. I strongly recommend, this is another situation where, um, you know, people tend to focus just on the software um, development side. Here we're going to, to make our own objects. We're going to tweak them and see how that affects our renders. We're going to actually look inside the object data, you know, the vertices, the indices, and Blender will be hugely beneficial. It will allow us to modify our, our our materials and our textures and our objects and see how that affects the renders, and uh, really very good. And it's it also I th I believe they're using um, uh, the newer RTX technology, so it'll help us compare you know our user interface to a to a real world 3D application and get some ideas on what we should include. So. Again, um, we're going to focus on using GIMP and Blender a lot, especially in the beginning. And then we're going to talk about basic 3D concepts. Uh, again, using these two uh, pieces of software plus a bunch of other libraries. We're going we're gonna to focus on the concepts and try to understand actually what's going on uh, with the hardware and the software. And terminology. If you've ever done any computer work with graphics or 3D rendering or anything of that sort, you, you quickly realize that the terminology, with all due respect to the folks who developed it, it's absolutely horrendous in my view. It is one of the major reasons why it's difficult to understand 3D rendering and, and 3D graphics. The terminology, I'm sure, you know, decades ago when this stuff was being developed, it was very correct at a certain very low level and it was technically accurate probably. But for, for modern day users, it is just horrendous and makes things very, very difficult. So we're going to use some real world concepts and analogies to try and convert that te uh, terminology, you know, like um, um, state machines and shaders and all that 
convert it into something that is a little bit more understandable so we can say, oh, that's what that means and, you know, make it a lot less difficult to comprehend. And then we're going to get into some of the tools and resources. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of tools and resources. Um, if you're like me and you come from a C-sharp background, you'll quickly realize in C++ that a lot of the uh, take-it-for-granted tools and resources that are quickly available C Sharp. Um, you know, for example, you can make a UI just by drag and drop. That's not available in C++. You're going to have to download some libraries. And so we're going to look at all the tools and resources we need to, to implement a lot of this. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make an OpenGL rasterizer, basically a 3D renderer. And it's going to ultimately look like this. And this is a, uh, a, a, a OpenGL renderer that I used, that I, that I put together. You can see it's got um, a light that you can move the light up and down. And you can see it's got little um, specular highlights. And it's got diffuse lighting. And um, I can move the light into the scene. And you can see the specular and, di specular and diffuse. And then I can move my object. And I've got this nice UI here. This is called IM GUI, which is a wonderful user interface. It's fairly easy to uh, implement. And you can see I can move my objects around. And I can move my, move my plane around. And I can uh, move my camera, rotate the camera, look up and down. Uh, I can zoom out and zoom in. And I can change the light intensity. So this is one of the first things we're going to do. And um, we're going to learn a lot about the basic concepts. And you can see here I've got basically three meshes. I've got a sphere, another sphere, and a plane. And I'm, I'm using textures and all that. So uh, the, the first thing we're going to do um, is implement this uh, simple um, framework for uh, 3D. And um, hopefully we'll be able to get a lot of the basic concepts we're going to need to move forward. And the next thing we're going to be doing is uh, making a uh, ray tracer. And, um, you know, we're going to get a uh, ray traced image that looks something like this in our ray tracer. You can see it's got reflections and it's got uh, defocus and it's got um, uh, a glass material here. So the goal is to use, do this as a separate, to, to get the basics of the ray tracing down. Uh, using this very simple application. And then after we do that ray tracer, we're, we're, I hope to get into um, the new RTX uh, and NVIDIA Optics ray tracer technology. And we're going to develop, um, or at least we're going to use resources like this wonderful NVIDIA uh, samples library where you can, where it does the RTX technology and does ray tracing, and it's got, they also use IM GUI. So I'm hoping that what we learn in the OpenGL uh, with that framework with IM GUI and all the basic, um, you know, making windows and stuff like that will help us to, uh, to better implement this, these NVIDIA samples. So as you can see, there's, there's a lot of stuff we're going to cover. Um, there's um, also, I'll show you the Blender. This is Blender. And um, here is where we're going to, you know, for example, if you want to make a simple plane, you just add a plane and then um, you can export it as an OBJ and then you can bring that into your render. So it's so much more easy if you can if you can make simple objects in Blender uh, rather than relying on other people's complicated or uh, less appropriate objects that, that don't really help you understand what you're doing. So um, that's Blender. That's going to be a big part of what we do. Now, prerequisites. What are you going to need to know before going into this? Um, if you're doing any sort of um, 3D uh, technology, you have to learn math and geometry associated with vectors, matrices, and coordinate systems. There's no way around it. I mean. You can make believe you understand it, but you're not going to understand it unless you learn at least these basic things. And there's there's stuff on the Internet on how to do it. Um, it's not that difficult. And I'll give you some resources 
uh, some good OpenGL resources that discuss this. Um, and you're also going to need to, to have a background in C++. Like I said, if you're like me, you came from C Sharp, uh, C++ is very similar in ways, and in other ways it's very, very different. So you're going to have to spend some time to learn C++. And I'm going to use Visual Studio 2017. I know 2019's out, but I haven't, I haven't made the switch. I'm happy with what I got so far, and I don't want to mess something up. There are also some great resources on, on YouTube on learning C++. My favorite is Jamie King. Uh, I believe he's a professor in, in Utah University. And uh, unfortunately, he hasn't posted in years, but he does some really good uh, C++ and OpenGL related, uh, very clear, uh, easy to understand um, videos. And also, if you want C++ and OpenGL, the Cherno is absolutely wonderful. He's uh, he posted a C++ series and also an OpenGL series, so that can help a lot. Also, um, I'm assuming you're going to be using Git, on, at least on your local machine like I do. I don't use GitHub up on the Internet, but I save all my changes and keep track of all my changes using Git. Um, so if you're not familiar with Git and you're just coming into programming, um, you know, if, if you're working on a, um, a piece of software and, and you expect to, you know, do like a Word document and say save as something, you don't do that with like Visual Studio. People use Git and Git is a way to keep track on your machine, on your local machine of changes so you can immediately jump back to an old version and that kind of thing. Um, there's a great series. There's a great video by Chili Tomato Noodle on YouTube on Git. I strongly recommend it. If you're not familiar with Git, he goes through a very simple explanation of what it does and how you can uh, get it enabled. It's there's um, uh, support for it in Visual Studio. It's like built in, so it's it's really nice way to do it. And then. Um, you're going to have to install and get familiar with the tools and resources, especially Blender. I am really a big fan of Blender. And if you've been working on um, writing 3D software, you may have not even seen reference to that in, in some of the tutorial videos. But to me, it is hugely, hugely important uh, to help you in your learning. So what tools and resources will we, we be looking at? Again, Blender, uh, we're going to be generating and editing 3D objects, doing UVs, materials, tons of different things in Blender. And we're going to be using GIMP, um, so it's easy to download. Same with Blender. Uh, the latest, by the way, the latest Blender is 2.81, just came out in GIMP. I forget the version, but uh, GIMP we can use to make and edit images and textures and maps that we're going to be using for your um, or for our um, uh, objects. I also recommend something called Notepad++. Uh, and the, I recommend the 32-bit, not the 64-bit version. It's basically an extension. It's like a, a really fancy, um, high-powered Notepad, Windows Notepad. Um, it, but it's kind of, it caters to working with um, uh, software type code and for for programmers and developers. And so I recommend, again, it's free. It's very good. You can open up all kinds of files that we're going to be using, our object files and image files. And it also has a plugin that you can download directly from inside Notepad++ called Hex Viewer. And we're going to use that to look at image files. So uh, I recommend you start looking at these three. And then for this, on the software side, for the development side, um, in order to access OpenGL, we're going to need GLM, which is a math library. I'm sorry, not to, op to access GL, OpenGL, but to do some of the math libraries, um, we're going to use GLM. And then to access OpenGL, uh, we're going to need GLEW, which these are all freely available libraries. Now, if you're not familiar with OpenGL, it's basically code written on your, your NVIDIA or AMD GPU drivers. It's implemented by the, the manufacturers, the NVIDIA or AMD. It's a specification that resides on your drivers. And in order to access OpenGL, we're going to need this library that allows us to 
to, to grab the functions on the driver to do OpenGL. Um, and GLFW, again, if you came from C Sharp, you're used to having, you know, drag and drop windows and UIs. Not so in C++. So GLFW is a very nice library that allows you to create OpenGL windows and do events and stuff. Um, I also mentioned this, um, this user interface, which is IM GUI. Really wonderful, wonderful uh, interface that allows you to interact with your software. So we're gonna we're gonna download that and implement, and then we're gonna have to load objects from Blender into our three D render. We're gonna use OBJ Loader, and I believe that's available on GitHub. And we're gonna use STB Image. There's there's a number of different uh, libraries you can use for these, but we're gonna choose choose these mainly because I think the um, NVIDIA RTX and um, um, Optics um, software examples are using these same libraries, I believe. So STB image allows you to, to very quickly load images that we're going to use as textures or whatever. So that's kind of an overview of what we're going to be doing. Again, we're going to, we're going to start out doing a, um, a, uh, a rasterization OpenGL, um, uh, software like this, an application like this. So we get the basic concepts. Um, and then we're going to move uh, over a fairly long series of, um, of um, tutorials to get to the RTX technology. So uh, if you think it's interesting and useful, stick around and hopefully we'll have a lot of good information here. And um, so take care and have a really good day. Thanks.